Welcome to The Hormone Hub, your go-to source for the conversations every woman in her 40s and 50s needs to have. I'm your host, Kylie Pinwell, your nutritionist helping you navigate your way through perimenopause, menopause and beyond so you can say goodbye to the endless fatigue, unexplained weight gain, hot flushes, PMS, mood changes and more that come on this hormonal roller coaster. If you missed the memo or think this is only for women of a certain age, ladies, it's time to think again. Now sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my latest episodes, which are released every week. Share it with your friends, your sweaty sisters. The more we talk, the more we help each other. Hello, hello, ladies, and welcome back to the Hormone Hub. So today we have a great guest, Edwina Murphy-Droma. Now, I met Edwina, I was a guest on her extraordinary most extraordinary more, life. More extraordinary. More extraordinary, every day. <laughs> more extraordinary everyday summit. And we had such a great time. And, you know, it was just such a beautiful summit to be part of. It was so inspiring, so uplifting. So I really wanted to get invite Edwina on the podcast today so she could share some of her magic with you. And I'm sure you will yeah, notice this straight away. So uh, Edwina is an audacious life designer and a talk show host. So welcome, Edwina. It is great to have you here. I am thrilled to be here, Kylie. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, pleasure. So would you like to, you know, just share with our audience, you know, a bit about yourself and, you know, what what do we mean when we have an audacious life? Well, I'll I'll go back a little bit because I feel like it's really it's it's helpful to give context to some of these titles that we give ourselves. Yeah, always. <laughs> so you know, I feel like my my journey to where I am now really starts when I was being launched into womanhood. So that transition from being a high school girl to a young adult, and when I left school. I had a very healthy dose of not good enough syndrome, I call it. So I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't academic. You know, like I just wasn't academic. I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't thin enough. I wasn't likable enough. I wasn't sporty enough. I wasn't musical enough. You know, like I just, I launched myself into being an adult not enough. And I think, you know, as we go through school, we pick up these belief systems about who we are and what is possible for us and wear them like a heavy cloak. And for many of us, we wear those belief systems for for life. Yes. So you have this idea that I'll never be popular, which in adult speak is I don't make friends easily or I don't have many friends. I am not smart, so I'll never be wealthy. We connect all these things together. I wasn't good at art at school, so I'm not creative. Yeah. And we wear, we carry this belief system and it really determines the choices that we make as we move through life. Yeah. So I, you know, with that belief system, the choices that I made between there and my first marriage breaking up was meant that I, when a, when a boy liked me, I was just grateful that they liked me. It didn't particularly matter whether or not they were going to be a great partner for me. Mm. I was just so grateful that somebody liked me and it validated that I was a worthwhile human being, that I was worthy of being seen, of being heard, of belonging to something or someone. And so I had a series of um, relationships that weren't good, that didn't serve me well, which led to marrying a man that was not who was not a great fit for me as a life partner. And we had four beautiful children together. I've got two boys and two girls. And when my youngest son was five months old, my first marriage broke up. So I became a sole care parent, single parent with four children under eight. Ah. And that was, you know, obviously in my life journey, that was a pivotal moment. And I can remember, you know, I've always been a real foodie and we lived in the country and I had the most beautiful veggie garden. And he literally left from, I didn't 
know it was going to happen from one day to the next. We had a we had a blow up one day. He packed a bag and walked away. And I remember sitting on the wall of my veggie garden, absolutely just you know, the, I I struggle to find the words that that articulate what I was going through well but I'm sure the women listening to this can identify in some way because we've all had these horrific moments and it was I was so lost and so unbelievably heartbroken and sad and scared and every emotion and then telling my children that their dad was gone and you know so there was there was a lot in there but it was an intense period of grief and readjustment for about 12 months until I realised that at some point in that 12 months it had actually been a gift to me in my life because I was forced to pull up my big girl pants and take responsibility for my life and for my kids and to yeah. stop giving responsibility to other people and looking to other people for validation that I was enough. I had to be enough because I had these four beautiful kids that were relying on me. Yeah, wow. That's huge. So that, you know, like that really was a period, you know, I I talk about period of transformation and I think that transformation is one of those words that can get thrown around and it feels slightly woo-woo or a bit like coach speak but if we think about transformational metaphor morphosis in the in terms of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly you go you break down completely you get mushy you become something completely different coming out the other side so that's what I mean when I talk about transformation so that was you know like that was where I started to grow into being me unapologetically now it doesn't happen overnight (laughs) (laughs) and I think I think as you go through life it's always a work in progress yeah absolutely absolutely so you know I had in amongst all that chaos I studied to become a naturopath and that was I only worked in that field for a very short amount of time but it was one of the greatest things I ever did because I used my knowledge as a naturopath to raise my family and to take care of my own health. Part of my story is that I've been on a diet since I was about 14, I think. So that's in like that is part of <clears throat> part of my story, but I've always had a an incredibly good whole foods nourishing diet and that's what my kids have been raised on and I'm very proud of the fact that my kids had next to no antibiotics, medications, or, you know, like all these things. They were raised naturally. So they know how to take care of their health from using what Mother Nature provides. And that's something that I'm very proud of. Yeah, amazing. But, you know, I went on and did functional nutrition and I was, what you know, one of those people that I know a lot of your audience will relate to that just kept studying. You know, like it was like when I know the next thing, I will be confident enough to help yes. people. When I know the next thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's funny you should say that. I have an extraordinary number of ladies inside yep. my program yep. uh, who are doing masters and yes. PhDs yes. and, yeah, just yes. that, you know, and they also, you know, have of kids that they're looking after and yeah. full-time jobs and you know and they just sort of yeah. layer this on top so I think it's yeah. that striving that it is next level is, yeah. yeah and I think it's part of indoctrinated belief and you know we have these six human needs from a psychology perspective and I won't go into that in detail but it's certainty uncertainty and significance is one of them and so I've worked with numerous lots of professionals but I'm thinking about one woman in particular who's a chemist and she really wanted to shift out of doing that work but letting go of that title is really difficult because it gives us a level of significance now that there's nothing about that that's wrong or you know it's not about right or wrong it's just about being curious and noticing and I notice in myself that I still want to tell people that I'm a qualified naturopath because I feel like it gives me 
like validation, validation. Like some yeah. kind of you know yes. a, a title and we yeah. we want that and it's just recognizing yeah. it for what it is yeah. um i went off where was i up to um sorry i'm just going to sort of interject there and i think it's an identity thing as well yeah. i know personally when i had kids yeah. i went from you know i was the the national sales manager of a of a you know, quite a well-known accessories company back then. Yeah. So if anyone remembers the Fiorelli bags with the little grey whistle, oh. <laughs> I used to sell those. Yeah. Um, but the when I had kids and I decide I chose to be a stay-at-home mum there yeah. for a period, and but it just it never sat well because I lost. I was only a stay-at-home mum, and it was just. Yeah. Like this, my confidence crumbled, my yeah. everything crumbled because I didn't yeah. have that title anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think a similar thing, what I've noticed is, you know, when women go through menopause, that loss of identity of who yeah. they were and, you know, it is a bit of a, a tipping point, I think, for a lot of women Absolutely. Sort of in, in their sort of early or throughout their 50s really. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's worth noting that we can use our need for significance for things that serve us well and for things that don't serve us. Yeah. So the other way that we use significance, and I'll relate it back to my own story, was as a victim. So I was, you know, I told the story a lot about how I was a single mum with four kids and that was why I was exhausted, fat, sick, never had enough money, you know, like, and that victim, that seeing myself as a victim of something gave me significance. Yes. Um, was and, it your fault? Yeah, that's right. And it's yeah. easy to allow these stories of being a victim of something and you know this can be big things or it can be small things yeah. i'm in a foul mood today because my kids have been rah 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 yeah. we've all done that but the reality is when you start to shift your thinking to a more personal responsibility rather than yes. victim of yes it, it's no fault blame guilt shame it's just looking at it with curiosity because i realized that i did that a lot you know my day I'm exhausted because my kids this and they all need yeah. this and I've got to do the washing and I've got to do and so when I and, and oh my god I need I need to have that bottle of wine oh yeah to get me but, through that yeah or absolutely. that that bag of chips or yeah, yeah. dinner has to be yeah. takeaway or yeah yeah self self-soothing through food and alcohol is another whole conversation oh, yeah <laughs> And we've, you know, like once again, we've all been there. So it's not, yeah. I always just say no fault, blame, guilt, shame. This, these yeah. conversations are just about going, being curious. It's like, ah, yes. that's an interesting way to look at it. That's that's right. my and only bring, intention. Bringing the awareness to yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. So change starts. It's with the awareness. Yeah. 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 So part of the method that I support women to shift from that sort of victim thinking to a more empowered way of thinking is just shifting the language because you don't have to make dinner for the family. You can sit on the couch and put your feet up. Yeah. You can. There's, there's going to be a loaf of bread or, you know, some beans in the veggie drawer or so you, a fruit bowl. Your kids can find food and feed themselves. I mean, obviously, yeah. once they're past a certain age. But, <laughs> you you know, it's a choice. You don't have to do the laundry. You can choose to do the laundry. You don't have to go to work. You can go on the dole. You don't have to. You know, so if you choose, if you choose to say I choose to rather than I have to, it is amazing how it shifts your energy. Now, it can take some practice. If you've been saying something on repeat for possibly years, it can take a little bit of practice, but it is amazing. I choose to eat a green salad with every meal rather than, oh, I have to get my greens in today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It is amazing. And the thing that happens is that when you start to recognize this in yourself and when you start to practice this, you are role modeling for the people around you yes. and so don't say anything but you can just over time you will start to notice now I remember there's a 
a fat loss protocol that I do every year. And my youngest son, who's now a strapping six foot 15 year old, yes. would say to me, Oh, so you can't eat this, can you, mum? And I was like, Of course I can eat it. I'm just choosing not to. Not to. Big yeah. difference. Massive. So you're difference. trying to lose weight and you go, Oh, I can't eat this and I can't eat that. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, when I was working as a naturopath, I used to say to clients, never say never. The minute yes. you say I am never going to eat that again, yes. it is the only thing you will think about. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I do that with my clients as well. Like we focus on what you can eat. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there are things that, you know, and that aren't ideal. But when we look yeah. at all the things we can have and then when you give yourself permission to enjoy the thing that's not necessarily yes. ideal, enjoy it yes. and then let it go. But because yes. you've given yourself permission, you've chosen to eat it, yeah. own it and then yes. let it go. And then as soon as you give yourself permission, it takes that wanting and that yes. that need oh, yes. you to have that. So Well, it, it gives that FOMO. I've, you can tell I've got had yeah. a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that fear, fear of missing out. The minute yeah. you sort of inject that into your reptilian yeah. brain, yeah. it goes into exactly. hyperdrive and, and and choosing and being aware of the consequences too. Like yes. I choose to exercise, or you know what? Today I choose not to exercise. Yeah, you know yeah. it's it, it goes both ways. Yeah, and it really I I you know. A, I talked about the power of language and how we can use these terms like transformation and the other word that I happen to love but I always give meaning or context to is empowered. And, you know, what does it mean to be an empowered woman? It means that you accept 100% responsibility for your experience of life. Yes. So if I want to be healthy, if I want to be happy, if I want to be strong, if I want to be positive, it is up to me. Nobody else. Nobody else can make me anything. Yeah. If you decide. Now, it you know, that responsibility doesn't sound like a particularly sexy word, but I promise once, you know, I paid I think in excess of $20,000 to go to the U.S., to do leadership training. Yeah. And the one thing, you know, this is a $20,000 little nugget <laughs> for your audience <laughs> that I'm giving freely. The one thing that I took away from all those trips to the US and what I learned was personal responsibility. If you take this one nugget, this simple strategy, it will change your life. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. It will change your life. So you can work with the most phenomenal naturopaths like Kylie or, you know, whoever you're choosing to work with and they will give you tips, tools, tricks, strategies, whatever it is that you're wanting that work but the only person that can make them work is you. It's personal 100%. responsibility. 100%. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, so... To just to to complete the story, <laughs> you asked at the beginning you know, what it is, you know, the audacious life designer. So part of that is that what I recognize is that we have to, you know, it's very easy for us to come up with all the things that we don't want and why we feel unhappy and that we want to feel differently and we want to have a different experience of life we want to be more do more have more but unless you have a clear actionable vision for what that is that is not just rolling around in your head but it is a down on paper you will forever get yourself in a position where self-sabotage and limiting beliefs and that cloudy idea of wanting more persists, but you don't know what that more is. Yes. Now, I, I can always guarantee that yeah. the vast majority of women listening to this will have a sense of they want more, yes. but I'm not sure what it is unless you understand the power of creating a clear, actionable vision. This Hormone Hub episode is sponsored by The Well-Balanced Woman. If you've been on a hormonal roller coaster, feeling bloated, your digestion isn't the best, and you know you're sick and tired of feeling lethargic with your weight creeping up, 
then this is the right program for you. I'm right there with you across the 12 weeks to hold your hand and I'll give you a loving kick up the bum if you need it. The Well Balanced Woman is your personalised four-phase program created to help you regain your energy, balance your hormones and fire up your metabolism so you get the results you're after. The link with all the details is on our show notes or over at kyliepinwell.com forward slash wellbalancedwoman. Now I do vision boards and I do them conventionally and unconventionally. There's different ways that I do them. But the very first step that I do with women is provide the, the support needed to create a picture, a clear, actionable picture of who they want to be, what they want to do and what they want to have in this new chapter of their life because the women that I work with are typically 50 plus. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, you know, it's a time of change. A lot of us have got, you know, we're, we're looking at either emptiness syndrome or, you know, we're, we're already there or it's approaching. Career stuff might be changing. It's a, it's a time of change. And so it is a fantastic opportunity to get clear yes. what you want this next chapter to look like. So Absolutely. that's the difference between living proactively and yeah. reactively yeah that's it and you know just trudging through in survival mode oh yeah and then coming out the other end yeah. and I interviewed a couple of weeks ago a lady Joy Overstreet and she's she was 82 oh, and okay. she just released a book yeah <laughs> um, she still she still runs a business she's yeah. a color consultant and you know she was amazing but she said you know her one take-home message for you know all the ladies listening was the best is yet to to come oh yeah and I just thought you know that is so true because yeah. if we we potentially have at age 50 we've got another 30 40 50 years yes. left in this body and yeah. in this life so yeah. you know it's not I'm too old I'm too tired I'm past it I you know and I I think a lot of women you know are are exhausted yeah yeah. and you know and rightfully so like it's a busy time of life but just yeah. knowing I think and I think having these conversations is is great because it's sort yeah. of like showing that there's more on the other side yeah absolutely and it's about you yeah. because your kids are older yeah more independent yeah your, I, I, it's it's your time yeah it absolutely is and I I think there's there's multiple layers to the exhaustion conversation yeah. Because there is exhaustion that comes if your diet isn't great, if you're not moving your body enough, if you're not getting enough sleep. There's the, yes. the physical reasons for exhaustion. Yeah. But what I find more, more typically is that the exhaustion comes from a lack of magic in your life. Yeah. So oh, it is that feeling of like just dragging yourself through life it is that feeling of like I've lost my yeah. excitement enthusiasm hope for the future that the future is going to hold something fabulous yeah that's it because we're missing that vision yeah. the yeah. vision's gone yeah, yeah yeah whereas when we finished school we maybe yeah. wanted to go yeah. traveling or yeah. you know go to uni and you know there yeah. was get married have kids you yeah. know there are all these things to look yeah. forward to but you know no one ever really tells us what happens after 50 yeah. <laughs> like, what happens yeah. You know? so yeah and it gets to be it gets to be a we hear all the negative phenomenally things. yeah it just gets yeah. to be a phenomenally exciting chapter of our lives yeah. but it it takes being surrounded by the right people because in society on general if you listen to the mainstream narrative and the typical normal conversations we are programmed to accept or expect the inevitable decline of our health, yeah. of our looks, of our significance, yeah. of our value as women in society. It's just this, this programmed dogmatic messaging yeah. that's like you can just expect it all to be downhill from here. Yeah. And that is total and utter BS. I don't know yeah. if I'm allowed to shit, swear on this, but there are moments when you may. <laughs> But you, it is very difficult to change that conversation in your head if you are not surrounded by people who are having different conversations. Absolutely, absolutely. I love this conversation. This yeah. is great. <laughs> you know, I hope, you know, if you're listening and you feel like you're 
in the thick of it and you can't see light at the end of the tunnel, you know, there absolutely is, you know, it just starts with that awareness. And as Edwina just said, you know, changing that, that framework, you know, I choose to, I choose to eat well, I choose to have, you know, and start baby steps. I choose to have breakfast. I choose to, you know, to go for a walk. Yeah. I choose to, you know, catch up with a friend. Yeah. You know, it can can be the smallest steps and those small steps when they're done consistently, you know, and it's that consistency and just that reinforcement that you're choosing you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, if I can add another little piece to that, we act on feelings, not on information. Yeah. And so if you feel, if you've lost sight of why you're wanting to eat better or, you know, if it's become a should rather than a, I am so excited about the end result, yeah. then it makes it very difficult to have those things in place. So if you get a clear picture in your head of the rock and body you're going to have, the fabulous clothes you're going to wear, the energy that you're going to have, yeah. how much more confident, you know, when you know when you're if we use the weight conversation, because it's not necessarily everybody needs to lose weight, but everyone can relate to the conversation. But it's like it changes how you walk into a room. It changes the intimacy that you have with your partner. It changes how you dress yourself. It changes how you move when you exercise. It's, you know, so if you get really clear and excited about, oh, my gosh, these are the clothes I'm going to be able to wear again and I'm going to, you know, like you can give yourself this fabulous confidence boost in all sorts of areas of your life. And so when you get that vision, then you feel like it. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, having the vision and then, you know, I I sort of sometimes I like this phrase and sometimes I don't fake it till you make it, you know. Yeah, yeah. That person or imagine that you're already there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then act accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because Absolutely. sometimes, sometimes you know, sort of feeling, you know, as we talked about, you know, in that victim mode or I'm yeah. overweight because I'm too busy, I don't have time to eat well, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, when we're in that, yeah. it, it's hard to sort of see that, you know, those yeah. other things are possible. But if we yeah. just sort of, I choose to eat a better lunch today. I choose yeah. to go for a walk this afternoon. I choose yeah. to catch up with a girlfriend for a walk on a, on the weekend, you know, yeah. and just switching it around. Yeah. yeah. And then we I can do. make it bigger. I choose to get a better job that I enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> I choose I to, yeah. you know. Absolutely. And, you know, I do with my clients, I do what we call a personal contract or it's like a little a touchstone in your life that you can use to get you back on track. And so we do this work where we work out who you want to be as a woman. Yes. So if you want to be confident, generous, and audacious <laughs> <Love it. laughs> then you then you you know like you pick three words and you then use that you embody it so how does a confident generous audacious woman dress herself how does she feed herself that is a way of stepping into um a more empowered or a a more exciting version of who you are that will support you to do things a little differently yes and it can be you know like this is not a a heavy exercise this is yeah it's to be fun you know imagine when you get up in the morning and it's like Okay, so if I am a sensual, audacious, courageous woman, how do I dress myself? Yeah, you're not hiding under no. the black floppy layers. No. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, and then, well, you know, I, it might start with fabulous earrings. That's right. <laughs> Lipstick, yeah. That's right. You can't so, see Edwina right now because obviously this is audio, but I have the, the pleasure of looking at her and she's gorgeous. And <laughs> she always has my amazing lipstick, amazing earrings and a beautiful <laughs> smile. So. Well, it, it, it changes how I show up in oh, life. Oh, 100%, yeah. And, I, you know, I, like so many women, got in a bit of a funk over COVID and it's like why 
why bother the why bother funk yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it you know it affects my mood significantly yeah. so my my daughter who's since left home she's 19 and um absolutely gorgeous she's fabulous and we would have this giggle because our outing you know during covid was to go to the supermarket <laughs> yeah <laughs> And so we would we would get dressed to go to the supermarket, yeah. and yeah. it just it shifts your experience of life. It shifts my experience of life. I can't speak yeah. for other people, but that's my experience. oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Edwina, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Now I feel like I want to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we can always, wherever we are, I think, you know, yep. we've got the, uh, the natural thirst for self-improvement and yep. self, you know, exploration. And I think, you know, this time of life is a perfect kind of changing point. It's, you yep. know, it's also too, it's possible to reinvent ourselves at this point, you know, 100%. Yeah. Oh, so. absolutely. And we, I think we should. I think yeah. we should. You it's know, right. we've, we've come. You don't have to be that schoolgirl that insecure oh, no. schoolgirl we can let yeah. that go you know? yeah absolutely and you know why wouldn't we do a midlife makeover you know it, it's 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 not just about what we dress and it's how we think and the beliefs that we have about who we are and what's possible for us. And with my clients I work through we have four pillars. So um and it's about health, wealth, time and love. Health is physical and mental health its wealth is tapping into the abundance of the universe and letting go of self-limiting beliefs that stop us from bringing in what we want. Um, health, wealth, time, it is time for the things that matter and love, love for self and love for others. Yeah. Love is pivotal to everything. And, you know, the ultimate act of self-love is personal responsibility. Yeah. So I, I walk my clients through, you know, we use those four pillars. And yeah. um, if we look at making over those four things, then absolutely anything is possible. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I love that. All right. So, Edwina, where can that lady, where, you know, if someone wants to find out more, about you where can we find you so i've got a free facebook group that is called women 50 plus get unstuck and up level so that's a free facebook group where i talk about you know how we you know all these different pieces that i've talked about here so that is a free group and it's a, a beautiful community if your um community wants to come and find us there there's probably some of them are already there because our yes. interest for more extraordinary every day is inside that group oh, so okay. if you if your audience wants to come in there they can be part of this conversation and they can also beautiful. find the fabulous interview that we did Yay, um, is right. slide there and then yeah. for those that want to go on and work with me I have I run a mastermind every year and I've got a new mastermind that will be starting now it's called in full bloom yeah. and it is um, more extraordinary every day life design masterclass but if you're in that free Facebook group you'll hear more about that in yeah, there. beautiful all right well I'll make sure that the links to that Facebook group are in um the show notes exactly. and which will get shared with everyone and of course you can find the podcast at kyliepinwill.com uh, forward slash podcast and if you're on my email list it does get emailed to you and yeah it also gets posted in our facebook group too so we'll Absolutely. put this out and yeah i highly encourage anyone who's got that curiosity and is looking for you know, choosing themselves to take personal responsibility and, you know, and you really can redesign your life. And I think that's yeah. the exciting opportunity that we all have. Yeah. So. And it gets to be fun. This is, you know, yes, it does. We get so bogged down in all the things that we have to do and all the things that we should do. But this is, you know, like I talk about hanging out in the ultimate playroom, which is your imagination. So if yeah. you had no fear and if you could let go of what anyone else might think or say, if money wasn't an option, if you could let go of all the things that limit how you think about what you want to do in life and just hang out in this fabulous playroom, which is, you know, like the communities that I create, but also in your imagination, just go, well, what if, what if I could, you yes. know, what would I do? Who would I be? What would I have? Yeah. And then we, then we get to support you with the, you know, support and the accountability to bring that yeah. vision to life. 
Love it. Love it. Well, Edwina, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And we will see you in the next episode. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. You can head on over to the show notes at kyliepinwell.com slash podcast where you'll find all the links and I have a little bonus surprise waiting for you. Before we go, it would mean the world to me if you head on over to your favourite po- podcast channel, subscribe and leave a review. Make sure to screenshot it, DM it to me so I can thank you personally. Then stay tuned for next week's episode. Can't wait to see you there.